And this one was just one where there was no double wishbone at all. It was just like a single wishbone. And uh, I mean, it's it pretty much, you know, it speaks for itself with just how amazing it is. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic with another cool build and I actually had tweeted a photo of this one, well it was a GIF actually and I'll show that GIF right now. What it's called is, it's known by a few different names but basically it's known as like the ultimate off-road go-kart uh, or as the designer calls it, the swin car or uh, it's also referred to as a spider vehicle. But basically, it's a car where each wheel has this crazy independent suspension, and the entire car is mounted on a pendulum mechanism. So as the car's body shifts left and right, it will always stay flat and level with gravity, and the wheels will automatically adjust themselves to, the, to stay at the same angle of the car while moving up and down 100% independently. And that's, you know, we've, we've done similar stuff to this with the off-road vehicles, so I decided to have my stab at making a swing car in Scrap Mechanic, and... I kind of was experimenting around and I, I it took a few revisions. Now th those three revisions at the end, those are garbage revisions. I don't think this is 100% what he had, but I don't think it's entirely my fault either. Um, there's kind of an issue where scrap mechanic physics and the way gravity works, it doesn't really work for this kind of a vehicle the way you would expect it to in real life, but we'll get to that in a bit. But first I'm going to show you the first revision. Uh, they all have a lot of bearings interacting with them, and it's just really just an awesome suspension setup. Regardless of the fact that it's not exactly like his car, um, this thing's got 10 blocks of differential height on the suspension. The, the, this third version here, which is my favorite version. But each wheel can go 10 blocks in height from any of the wheels around it, and all four of them maintain contact. Which makes it just absolutely insane for climbing rocks and that sort of thing. On, on the real design, there's a torsional spring on each axle, and that's what allows the wheels to move up and down, and that's the only spring. Now, in Scrap Mechanic, we can't exactly make a torsion spring, so this would be the pivot point here, and we use this spring here in compression between those two points, just on free-floating bearings. See, each wheel can move up and down on that suspension piece, as well as flex the whole body. And you can see there, even this first revision um, still had just an absolutely insane... I mean, this wheel cambers like crazy but an insane suspension travel. So this is the first version of the car. Uh, you'll notice the wheels do camber independently of the body, so they don't follow the same angle of the body, which is not exactly like the Swin car. But it's got these torsion springs, and then it's got this center pivot point uh, here for the entire pendulum axis. And then it's also got the steering on this sort of secondary pivot point, which I thought would act like a double wishbone, and uh, it really doesn't. But you can see there, the, the, obviously the, the biggest issue with this car is uh, we don't really have control over the steering so the weight of the car is not enough to offset the weight of the tire so when we do turn sometimes it engages but sometimes you can see there it just turns the body and we kind of have to wait let the tires reset a bit and then turn and you can see all it's really doing is pushing the axles this was the first version and obviously the fact that you can't get out of there oh no we're gonna lag oh boy see you can't turn all the time and that actually just turned it steeper not the other direction so that kind of posed a bit of a problem and that was you know the first issue and then of course the second issue being that the wheels don't camber themselves appropriately to the body of this car so i said all right screw that done with that version we went on to version two now version two has the double wishbone across the center so the pivot point is this top bearing here the bottom bearing acts as a stabilizer bearing which in turn keeps the body in line with the wheels at least it's supposed to. And then we've got the same kind of mechanism here with the steering and the push bar and all that, yada, yada, yada. Torsion springs. And you can see this one kind of works a lot better. So the steering automatically responds to you, um, but you can see it folds quite ridiculously. It's, uh, it, it, and then once it folds, it can't get back. Now that mainly is because the uh, double wishbone I made um, wasn't, wasn't done correctly. It was done absolutely terribly. And uh, what, what actually was happening is the pivot point is the the high point there and it's not pulling itself back it can't fight the wheels see there it can't get that center bar if we go back and reverse eventually we can get it to straighten out there we go but basically just not enough weight to get out of that terrible position and this is sort of the issue that happens all the way across but this is just a terrible vehicle so we're just gonna we're gonna scrap that one there that was version two now version three is where i really hit my stride here and same kind of mechanism with version two Except the issue with version 2 was the alignment of the steering axle as well as these two. So you've got 
the double wishbone mechanism here it goes all the way across it's pivoted and then this free floating bearing of the pivot point is aligned with this free floating bearing the top bearings act as a stabilizer bar to keep it always aligned with the wheels and then of course the steering bearing is lined up in behind now this version works like a charm stay stable no problem you can see there we've got the engine cranked up just a little bit faster uh, let's just slow it down that massive 10 block in height suspension travel um, we do get that awesome just ability to climb everything like we can we can just take this set of rocks here just drive straight into them and there's just there's no issues it doesn't like it even goes over that tree trunk until of course we flip over on the electric motors but just let it strain back out and you can see just really the ultimate off-road vehicle it just it's amazing to watch it sort of climb over stuff uh, without any issues and just you know have that that all-terrain capability now You'll notice though that the wheels are cambering, they are going to keep themselves aligned with the body of the vehicle. But the problem is, is that the body of the vehicle does not always keep itself aligned with gravity. And I don't think this is due to the design. I know someone might come along and they might say, you know what Con, your design actually sucked. Uh, here's why, blah 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 blah. And then I'll probably go, you're right. And if someone can actually figure out how to make this perfectly behave like the car... Uh, in the photos and in the in the gif there that would be awesome because it would really be quite amazing but the reality is um yeah it's not it's not perfect we turn into a turn and then we stop and you'll notice the bars stay tilted now on his car that doesn't happen it actually would straighten itself out now our pivot point is technically right here about this white white axle and if you wanted to consider it the top pivot point, you can too, it doesn't matter. And you can see slowly but surely it is straightening itself out. And now it's stopped. But it takes forever for it to do that. So, and this is what I can't understand about the game physics. If we take the whole car body and we tilt it, you can see, technically speaking, we have more weight at a higher elevation, like a higher height off the ground. There's more weight here on the right side, which means this entire side technically has more force on it, which should technically push it over to the left side. It should push this pivot point. You can see if we drew a line straight down from this pivot, there'd be more weight on the right side of the pivot than the left side. So the entire mechanism should sway over. And you can see very, very slowly, eventually, it will do that. And look, it stops right when it is in fact level with gravity. But it doesn't do that fast enough while you're actually driving. So what this means is you don't get the same effect when you're driving into hills or into obstacles as the real swin car. So when I drive into this hill, for example, let's park on the side of this hill, like so, right? You can see there the body actually sways outwards. But if we look at the way physics according to everything should work, this pivot point is here. There is a much greater mass on the left side of the pivot point. So this body should in fact swing to the right, but the weight of the wheels combined with the weight of the mechanism combined with everything else means that no, the body in fact stays elevated there at literally an impossible angle. I don't think there's a way I could fix that. And I've tried with many different mechanisms and it seems like it's just the friction on the bearings combined with the weight of the body. It's There's just not enough weight on the body to offset all the friction in the bearings and everything else. So I decided to try a few different revisions. Now, I am going to upload this to the workshop, this version right here. I still love it as an off-road vehicle. I think it's great. Uh, I am going to upload it sort of as like a, an off-road spider car, I think I'm going to call it. But I don't think it's truly the, the Swin car. And that French designer made an epic vehicle and I don't really want to... Uh, call this a swin car when I can't fix that issue with gravity. So I tried to fix this issue uh, with the with the gravity with a few different things. And the first thing I thought is, okay, maybe the force of the body, the weight of the body is not enough. So let's increase the weight of the body, number one, make it a little bit bigger here. And then maybe the pivot point is not far enough up because if the pivot point is really close together, it's a very strong arm. It's like a, a having a really long plank to help you lift something up, right? It's a lot easier with a longer a pry arm. And so if we make this longer, then it should be less force required to move that top bar. So maybe it wasn't enough force. And then on top of that, I said, okay, finally, maybe the steering is causing some interference. So let's remove that steering bar and put the steering directly on the axles. And if we try it, um, it, it doesn't really do anything. We should center ourselves. It should center because of the weight of this block. There's a more steel block weight over top of this pivot point here. So if we draw a line straight down from this pivot with gravity, there's way more material over here. Um, and even if we take off these tires, it still doesn't want to center itself back. 
and you would think, well, maybe we didn't just add enough weight. There's not enough weight on it, right? So I thought of that too, but uh, if we take this version here, which actually has a modded ultra heavy radioactive crazy block on it from, oh yeah, no, it's just freaking out. It has the ultra heavy, super awesome heavy block from Durf on it right in the middle and maxed out suspension, but even it still falls prey, you see, to the unnecessary, well, it actually just folds over. See, just on a slight angle, just like that, you can see it, it's still, look, it's not, why is it not centering? See, it still has, technically, if we draw a line straight down from pivot, more weight over here, less weight over here, it should center. And it never does. I, I, I can't fix the problem. So then, you know, I tried all sorts of things. I tried disconnecting the double wishbone and, uh, you know, making this longer version, and, th and that didn't work. This was the longer version as well. Um, why do I have two longer versions? What did I do? Oh, this was the longer version with the steering left on to help aid that double wishbone. And it basically behaves the same way as the version uh, that's shorter without the longer thing. Right, so the body still leans and it'll still eventually straighten itself back out with gravity, but it doesn't maintain it. And then this one was just one where there was no double wishbone at all. It was just like a single wishbone. And uh, I mean, it's it pretty much, you know, it speaks for itself with just how amazing it is. Oh, perfect. Like, look at this. Look at this. How many vehicles do you know can have four tires in four different directions? But anyways, guys, I am going to upload uh, version 3, as I'm going to call it, but I'm going to call it the off-road spider car. But I am going to upload this version to the workshop. Uh, I really, really like it. I think as an off-road vehicle, it's just kind of awesome as a little bit of a rock crawler. And uh, try and make a version if you have it. And if you do, send me a copy of it and, like, you know, comment on this video. Uh, I'll pin a comment on the top of this video. Reply to my pinned comment. If you have one and just send me the workshop link to it and I will definitely check them out and if I get enough people I'll do a follow-up episode because I really want to try and make that that car exactly as it is but I just don't see how you can do it if gravity doesn't straighten itself out and I did in fact try spawning an infinite stabilizer and uh, putting that on the vehicle but it doesn't really make a difference because you don't get the pitch control so you can't pitch it up and down and even if you have a stabilizer in one direction, it doesn't really work because as you drive on angles like this, you know, you you need it to be able to pitch up and down and roll. Um, but yeah, it, it for some reason, there's just something weird with the gravity physics and uh, even with high gravity blocks, it doesn't make a difference. But you can see they're just driving up pretty much anything with no care in the world. But uh, make sure you guys hit that like button down below if you like this kind of thing. I really had a good time trying to figure this one out. It was a lot of fun. Uh, to try and figure out how this concept would work and it was a lot of fun to play around with but uh, make sure you hit that like button down below hit that subscribe button if you haven't already this is just one of those mechanisms i had to try i had to make it in scrap mechanic and uh you know it's okay we're a little bit bottomed out here let's get up here come on there we go perfect and it, it's pretty awesome it works really well handles every, any terrain but uh, definitely not the swin car mechanism but make sure you hit those buttons down below and as always i hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see y'all next time.